enemy the, the Russian people, consequently the enemies of the working class, every place. And later on, of course, it proved that he was wrong, that he was nothing but a paranoid, sick SOB in many cases. And these people that were purged came from the background of fighting for the, the great ideals of socialism. They went through all the aches and pains and the terror to create this society, only to be taken out later as dogs and shot. The PUM was an independent Spanish Marxist party which loudly attacked Stalin's dictatorship. Following the Moscow line, the Spanish communists called the PUM Trotskyist, which it wasn't, and accused it of collaborating with fascism. Frank Deegan was a Liverpool docker who had volunteered to fight in Spain. Well, we were informed by our political commissars that our troops who were on the Anakin front, who were mainly composed of anarchist uh, divisions and uh, members of the PU, who were commonly known as Trotskyists, were fraternising with the em enemy, even uh, playing football matches. By the 1st of May 1937, the political tension in Barcelona was so acute that the May Day Parade had to be cancelled. The anarchists and the PUM were still powerful in the city. The communists were impatient for a showdown, as was the central government, with the exception, of course, of the anarchist ministers. The conflict began here, at the Barcelona Telephone Exchange, which was still run by anarchists. One of the girls on duty that day was Enriqueta García Tavera. I was at the switchboard near the window. The anarchist guards were half asleep over their rifles. At about three o'clock, I looked out and saw three lorry loads of assault guards pull up outside. They jumped out and raced into the building. They started going up the stairs. I think most of the anarchist guards were on the first floor. Then I heard shots and I was even more frightened. The anarchists saw this as the all-out challenge they had been expecting. They raised barricades throughout the city. Shooting began in the streets. On the Aragon front, some anarchist units began to march back to Barcelona. The anarchist Juan Manuel Molina was defence under secretary in Catalonia. I phoned all the commanders of the divisions at the front and told them to stay put and secure their sectors, but everything was quiet. I told them everything was under control in Barcelona and that we had more than enough men here. On the Barcelona streets, the anarchists could have used their superior strength before the government reinforcements arrived. The truth is that in Barcelona we control the situation. I hadn't intervened yet. All the military barracks were in my hands. Except for the Karl Marx barracks, and we had it surrounded by the people, just waiting for my orders to attack. The anarchist ministers rushed to Barcelona. One of them, Federica Monsigny, appealed to her followers over the radio. She argued that they could not afford a civil war behind the lines. I tried to make them understand that they couldn't go on fighting, that they had to lay down their weapons and end that fight, that the battlefronts would collapse and it would all end shamefully in front of the whole world. This appeal horrified the anarchist militants of the barricades. Their leaders, they thought, had betrayed them. To lay down their arms would mean the end of their revolution. At the barricades, you heard all the insults you can possibly imagine. Old militants were saying that the ministers had forgotten what it was like to be a worker, that the revolution had to be carried out of the barricades and not of the ministers, and they were going to shoot those ministers. There I heard all those threats from people who were disappointed, and they all remembered what had happened to the anarchists under the Bolsheviks in Russia. And they feared the same would happen here, as it did eventually, that they would be victims of the repression of the communists. 
de que íbamos a ser víctimas de una represión por parte de los comunistas. The Republic brought in troops to put down the insurrection. Five days of fighting had left about 500 dead. The anarchist power and their revolutionary vision of the future now lay shattered. That's where we lost the war, the revolution and all the hopes that the Spanish people had placed in the transformation. That's where it all ended, in the May events. The May events also overthrew Largo Caballero, the socialist prime minister of the Republic. He had been too independent, too tolerant for communist taste. Now he was forced out of office and replaced by Juan Negrín, another socialist, but more authoritarian than Largo Caballero. With the anarchist revolution checked in Catalonia, the communists were now free to deal with their other rivals, the Pool, who had fought alongside the anarchists in the May events of Barcelona. In June 1937, Poum was declared illegal, and an order issued for the arrest of its leaders. The first to be taken was Andres Nin, the Poum's general secretary. Julian Gorkin, another member of the Poum executive, witnessed his arrest. Another party member, Adroer Herodela, came up to my office to tell me that the police had come to arrest us and take Andres Nin away. I looked out of the balcony and saw Nin walking outside quite casually, surrounded by policemen. I never would have thought that I would never see him again, and the terrible tragedy that was being prepared for the death of Andres Nin. Nin was never seen again. He was apparently taken to this prison in Alcalá de Henares and later murdered by Stalin's agents. Other Poom leaders were later put on trial for treason. The price for halting revolution and restoring order to the Republic was high. Random terror was over, but the Communists now controlled much of the political police. This nationalist propaganda film made at the end of the war, allegedly shows communist torture cells in a Barcelona monastery. Freezing in refrigerators and disorientation techniques were used not only against Franco's agents, but also on the Republic's enemies within its own camp. Aragon was the last area still under anarchist control. In August 1937, the communist military commander Enrique Lista marched in to restore the central government's authority. The communist troops returned land to all those who had been forced to join the anarchist collectives. The central government, with communist support, had demolished the anarchist revolution and imposed its discipline. But at the front, the Republic was failing. Its new disciplined popular army continued to be defeated. Shortly after its takeover of Aragon, the Republican army launched another offensive in an attempt to take pressure off the north. The first major battle was at the small town of Belchite, 